Let's talk with DJ Cappuccino. Thank you for listening to Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. And if you're listening, please click on like or subscribe. We value your comments. We value your criticism because that's how the podcast will grow. Thank you again for viewing. Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. This is a special episode uh, where we are going to be discussing politics, just overall politics, but with intentions to find or to be clarified on which party we should vote for. But what are you working on, like, uh, currently? Uh, what are you doing with UNISA? I'm, I'm actually a postdoctoral fellow with UNISA um, in the Faculty of Public Management. Regenerative agriculture is one of the papers that I'm working on. Mm. The second one I'm working... Wait, hold, hold on. You are talking to a DJ here. What is regenerative agriculture? You can see even now, simple thing. You don't... When last did you see a bee? Uh, a bee, a bee, a simple This bee. morning. Where? At the restaurant when I was having breakfast. Just one? I just uh, think it was two because I saw one when I was uh, putting on fruits. In the that then I saw one when I was saving my coffee. Yeah, a very good liar, my friends. <laughs> I saw bees. When us, some of these things as DJs, we don't understand them well. We wish uh, people from who are in politics, people who are in government, in government, to come and unbundle these things and tell us what is it that they're going to do in order for us to vote for them. We're having a party that believes Mabahambe. The other one believes uh, we must open the borders. We're looking at maybe some of the challenges that can be brought by that. I mean, we have diverse political ideologies. Look, DJ, coalition with different ideologies. How many parties in South Africa do have a political ideology? How many? Not all parties have an, ide an ideology. I can put that argument. Welcome to another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. This is a special episode. Uh where we are going to be discussing politics, just overall politics, but with intentions to find or to be clarified on which party we should vote for. Uh, I'm with a friend of the show, a person that you're going to see a lot, especially when we have to discuss any other matter, whether it's uh, socioeconomic, whether it's traditional matters, whether it's academic, he'll still be here. I'm with Dr. Mabota. Welcome to Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Uh, thank you so much, DJ. And... Uh... Good afternoon to all your viewers. Good, good. I saw you on TV. Was it last week? The Tabombeki thingy? Yes. I think Unisa. they're doing it with Unisa. What's happening there? Yeah. What are you doing with Unisa? No, I'm, I'm actually a postdoctoral fellow with Unisa um, in the Faculty of Public Management. What so do postdoctoral fellows do? We specialize in research. Uh. We're dealing mainly with research. We try to boost the research of, of the institution. Okay. We make sure that the institutional output on research is going up. Mm. This is something that um, I highly appreciate because most of the time, as people from historically black institutions, it was not done. Mm. Now we are improving research output from black people, black generations. We are trying our level best oh, okay. to ensure that we contribute to the theory of knowledge. Well, what are you working on, like, uh, currently? It's currently, there are a number of papers that I'm busy with. Mm. Um, there's one on um, agriculture. Regenerative agriculture is one of the papers that I'm working on. Mm. The second one I'm working... Wait, hold, hold on, you're talking to a DJ here. What is regenerative agriculture? A regenerative agriculture is... Mm the agricultural process, mm. which, which has to use more of the natural processes. Mm. You see, these days we're dealing with genetically modified food, uh, which is creating problems to our society. Mm. So we're trying to uh, bring back the issue of uh, organic okay. system of farming. Mm. That is what we are trying to preach. Because if you, if you check in terms of the knowledge gap, People are just saying, let's get food. Mm. Where does it come from? You look at the seeds now. Just let's typical example of a seed. If you buy a seed from a, whatever a, a company, even if you store it next day, it might not work because you must always buy seed annually. So we are trying to bring, to bring back our organic system. That will also contribute towards uh, lifestyle diseases. Okay. Being uh, 
reduced. All right. You can see even now, simple thing. You don't. When last did you see a B? Uh, a B, a B, a simple. This B. morning. Where? In the restaurant when I was having breakfast. Yeah, maybe. How many did you see? Just one. I just uh, think it was two because I saw one when I was uh, putting on fruits. In the, the then I saw one when I was having my coffee. Yeah, a very good liar, my friends. <laughs> I saw bees. <laughs> Yeah, but generally, yeah, but I, I understand what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so you and and what, what's what's another paper that that you think is interesting and and relevant? Because I'm loving the fact that you are researching about that regenerative agriculture. I think it's relevant. We eat food every day, because I'm worried that most of the papers we produce is for us to edify ourselves. That as academics, yeah, we know what we do in the methodology, what what. But are those things relevant to? Uh, are they solving the current problems that we're having as a country? So what's another paper that you're so passionate about and you're looking forward to finishing? I'm also busy with problem-based learning. Okay. Because we need to integrate the thinking capabilities of the students. Mm. Problem-based learning, um, which, which is more like your engineering. It, it, it originated from the uh, science faculties. Okay. So we need to bring it into public administration. The paper, we want to bring it into public administration mm -hmm. so that we can have, be able to solve government and governance problems based on the problems, not only as a theory, where we just mimic what our lecturers taught us. Mm -hmm. We want students to think beyond what, mm -hmm. what problems, how can we best solve the problems. That is the type of education that we also want to bring in into public administration. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. I think that's interesting. But today, um, I don't know. Um, I think that many people are not sure what they're going to vote for. I believe that many people who registered to vote but still think maybe they're not going to vote. They're not sure. But we're trying, uh, as the purpose of today's uh, episode, is to encourage people uh, in a sense of people knowing uh, It's okay. It's nice. We're not on SABC. Uh, anyway. Uh, we, we're trying to encourage people to, to vote, but also to know what to vote for as much as maybe I'm not sure what I'm going to vote for. You know, For the sake of the podcast, I will say I'm not sure what I'm going to vote for. And, and I think there's many people out there. And we're also inviting to the viewers that on the comment section, tell us what to vote for and why. But this episode is also to challenge political parties, all those independent uh, candidates, to you know to bring us uh, 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 to be up to par with them, to know what to vote for. So that's actually uh, the whole thing. Because in South Africa, we're facing a multitude of socioeconomic problems. I mean, uh, for instance, income inequality. Since 1994, I think it's something that has never, it's even widening more because uh, white monopoly capital is still owning, uh, especially the key uh, uh, means of productions, the key sectors are owned by white people, whereby even, depend, even we doing the same jobs, but the salaries, they, they vary. But also even salaries, not only racial lines, also from another black person to another black person, where there's a gap. And I think it's a problem. I mean, there are many things. There's issues of unemployment. Uh, we're still unemployed, you know. Uh, as uh, someone put it, that many unemployed people are now running to podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could be one of them. It, it's also a, a, a socioeconomic problem uh, that I think it's, it's any, in every family in South Africa, there is someone unemployed and something should be done about it. Poverty, education, healthcare. Crime and violence. I mean, crime right now, we have crimes that are foreign to us. Mm. I don't think we are a country where people would be kidnapped and there must be a ransom paid. It's like South Africa is now becoming a crime haven. Mm. People are leaving European countries, other African countries, American countries, to come and uh, uh, to commit crime here. And you look at other countries like uh, Rwanda, mm. you don't play there. They, as soon as you get to the airport, even yourself, you behave. You don't want to step on someone's foot because, you know, 
that can get you serious jail sentence there. Yeah. Um, the issue of corruption, however, I can, you know, I think as we discuss, especially if we're going to discuss issues of state-owned enterprises and everything, I can uh, debate the issue of corruption either way. But corruption is there, and then it's also hampering service delivery. Uh, we're having issues of infrastructure deficits. Uh, there are breaches that have reached their expiry date and they're still in use. And those bridges can collapse anytime and they're still there. You know, what is it that has been that roads that should be closed and should be rehabilitated, but those roads are led to actually work. You know, we have a lot of infrastructure deficits, a lot of maintenance that needs to be done. Uh, we also have political instability. Not necessarily, uh, even from, uh, 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 for instance, one party. I mean, if we're having a ruling party with different factions inside, that is a party that is ruling us. And when there's different factions inside, it's actually causing an instability. So those are the things that I can come up with. I don't know, uh, doctor, which angle you can take, maybe with regard to the factors that I've mentioned and even other factors. Uh, uh, but also we're saying to political parties, independent candidates, come to just talk with DJ Cappuccino. Come and tell us how are you going to solve the current problems we're having right now. Yeah, thank you very much. Let, let, let me start, if you talk socioeconomic matters, from the definition itself, it shows that it's a multi-dimensional construct. It has got a lot of variables that needs to be solved within it. You cannot run away Mm. from socioeconomic problems in South Africa currently. Mm. Mm. The problem that we, we have is that we, we tend to look at ourselves more than what we are supposed to do. Mm. What do you mean? You, 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 have, you have the voters voting for the honorables. Voters are voting for the honorables. But once they get in there, they become the best horribles. Mm. They are no longer honorables. They are horribles, most of them. Because instead of solving the socioeconomic factors, as you indicated, they are the ones who are fueling them. You look at the issue of employment and unemployment. Educated people are more on the streets. And those who are less educated and less qualified are in the offices. That on its own, its job creation is fine. Uh, I remember when I was still in SASCO, we used to call it progressive corruption. Mm. But that is, it, it's like a, a cabal. That needs only to be done for a particular purpose. Mm. Immediately thereafter, you should unbundle it. But mm. now it's becoming a way of life. And how do you expect that somebody who's not well-educated, who's not well-learned, to employ somebody who's well-learned? Because that person already sees a threat. Please unbundle this uh, progressive corruption as a SASCO product, uh, SASCO of the ANC. What is that? Uh, your question has got a lot uh, behind it, but let me unbundle Every it. Every question I'm going to ask you has a lot <laughs> behind it. I'm not afraid of... of I'm, I don't, I'm, I'm not apologetic of being a SASCO member when I grew up because that's where I learned most of the, of the social skills. And they taught you progressive corruption? No, no, they didn't teach me. Okay. That's one of the things that we learned. Progressive corruption is that now here we are, we don't have an engineer in a municipality. Okay. We go ahead hunting for a qualified engineer. We go ahead hunting. Remember when just advertise? There's no way to say, unless if you have a policy of head hunting. Like there's a crisis already. There's a crisis already in the municipalities. Yeah. Sewers are all over. Yeah. You need an engineer now. You need an engineer now. And if you have to advertise, wait for a month, interview, shortlist, what were these three months, the storage. It, it's, it's in the people's yards. And you know there's a person who can do a good Exactly. Job. Infrastructure is aging. We need somebody who can come and recommend the overall system and then come up with a new plan. You go and, and I, I, lo I love that corruption. You I go love, and head hunt a qualified somebody. Not somebody because he slept he's sleeping with somebody. Then that person can get an upper hand, get a job, so that this one as a patella mavuso lintuil. Mm. Uh, 
Mavuso is the modern language. Ask Atisa. When you grew up, you used to say Munno Sanjo Atisa. So they bring their own people inside the government system so that by this government, people are not competent. Yes. So that is one of the problems that That's we... That's disastrous. Yeah. Mm. Um, you spoke about... You spoke about aging infrastructure. Yeah. It's all over the municipalities. Remember, majority of the municipalities were meant for white population under Group Areas Act. Immediately, we start to become more. The infrastructure is no longer coping. If you check most of the houses, they're still using the asbestos pipes. Can you believe some of the municipalities are still having those asbestos pipes underneath now? It's 2024. Mm. And when were they installed? Obviously, they are clothing. They are trees. They are blocking them. Because with the asbestos, the trees underneath, they penetrate into the pipe. And the trees start to, to grow inside the pipe. So that's why you always have a lot of blockages. And most of the municipalities did not take out those pipes. They are still there. That is why you will see, always see infrastructure which is being repaired. And remember, repairs of water has got a lot of money. That's why so most of the time, they will not overhaul the entire system because people are looking at pocketing a lot of money. Mm. Instead, the, 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 the horribles are pocketing a lot of money. While the honorables in council or in parliament will be saying, let us overhaul the system. But the horribles will be refusing to overhaul the entire system and put the, the, the modern infrastructure. I stayed in Velcom for quite some time. And I think it was explained the very same way, that the infrastructure was not designed to handle the people back or the Dal. Uh, uh, those townships that are there and also Velcom grew on its own. So now the, the infrastructure it ages. That's why there, the business of the day is to fix the blockages, storage, water everywhere and everything. And uh, three years after I stayed, I went to visit again. The town is now in shambles. Mm -hmm. And then I think these things, they knew that they need the system overall a long time ago. Yes. So I don't know by majority, the day but one, uh, 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 when their houses are filled with storage water and everything, will it be the day they wake up now? But as we're saying, some of these things you are, because infrastructure uh, 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 deficits are also affecting, I mean, even energy right now. Mm. I think the reason we're having crisis where the plant is tree where the plant is dead, where a plant must uh, uh, be decommissioned, commissioned again and all that, is because of infrastructure that has actually aged. And such things, the documents are there or no, they had this number of years and they can be improved. You see, so Renas, some of these things as DJs, we don't understand them well. We wish uh, people from who are in politics, people who are in government, in government to come and unbundle these things and tell us what is it that they're going to do in order for us to vote for them. Let, let, let me agree with you on that one. Let's call the relevant people to the podcast yeah. to come and explain mm. why the recommendations of the commissions are not implemented. Remember the first, the first uh, uh, um, load shading yeah. was deliberate. Remember there are two dimensions to the whole thing. Esther Wombeg has made it very clear last week that there were three dimensions to, to the South African situation. Mm. It was the first generation, which everything was on an upward trajectory. There was a second dimension. Please break it down nicely. I'm giving you time to okay. break it down. I want to understand that. What, 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 what the former president, whom some of us must apologize to him for having campaigned to have him ousted. I think we must just apologize. Do you want to take it from Mandela to... Yeah, it, where actually, we are? actually, the years from, from please, him. Please, please do that. Because the first generation is from 1994 to 2007. Yeah. Where everything was going on an upward trajectory. Your GDP was almost at 3.6%. The country was having reserves in terms of the economy. And uh, we were not having a deficit 
in terms of repaying the loans. Really? Came 2000, yes. Came 2000, what Trevor Manuel were doing a very wonderful job at that time. Came 2008, what academics we call the nine wasted years. That's what we must call uh, uh, politicians to come and ex um, unbundle it from their own perspective. Remember, as an academic, I will not unbundle it from a political perspective. Then we've got uh, the nine wasted years where everything started to go down. That's what the president was explaining. I think it was a speech by somebody else. He was, but uh, the, the, the article is there online. Everything started to go down. Your GDP started to go down, I think, to 1.6. Unemployment started to rise. Uh, there were no longer reserves. Uh, we had to borrow more. Everything was just going down. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure started to go down. Your um, parastatals started to become into shambles. You can even see now the railway line. It's, some of the areas don't even have a railway line now. It has been taken away. So everything started to go down at that time. And the last generation is where we are now, where somebody came in, tried to take everything up again, but the culture which is existing does not permit the current situation to go up again because there's a culture of ensuring that we feed ourselves, nothing else. Mm. So that is the problem which is there now. So if, if you check at those trajectories, it will tell you that we need somebody who's very strong to come in. But call the politicians to come and explain why are we in this situation? Mm. Why are we in this situation? Because if you check, everything has, has been done under one political party. I like what you, when you spoke about the socioeconomic problems, that there are problems within the same parties. But the same problem is the same people wearing the same t-shirts, speaking the same language, going to the same conferences, having to implement the same policies of the same organization. But now, things went down. And one of them, the former president, is, is trying to rise again with a new party. What does that but tell but us? But if I can argue, uh, maybe bring in an argument of a DJ. Yeah who plays at Jambe every weekend at Trautlok, uh, who could be tired right now. If I can argue that, uh, for instance, there were um, important strides during Jacob Zuma addressing social economic disparities. Uh, social welfare pro programs, they went up. There were expanded social grants. Uh, there's also, you know, social grants for much needed vulnerable communities including the elderly, including children and everything. They intensified even on other programs, especially school, uh, nutrition and everything. If I can argue from that point, if I can argue again that uh, uh, administration of infrastructure development was also prioritized. We have seen big offices of police and what what being launched. We have seen a new university. I think the planning or whatever time we invest of Mpumalang which are the highlights of a, 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 the reign of President Jacob Zuma. Uh, also, maybe issues of, I think we are also overlooking the issue of social justice uh, with regard to maybe, for instance, uh, the restitution of land. The, 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 it, the debate on the land reform got intensified. For instance, the issue of energy. Uh, uh, the discussion on having nuclear power plants. I mean, if Jacob Zuma was allowed with a program, we could be having a nuclear power plant right now. But everything that he was suggesting, we're like, no, it's the Guptas, they're eating and everything. I'm just debating this matter. So I'm just saying that we can't say it's a nine wasted years, particularly because the person who's sitting right now was the deputy president at that particular time. <laughs> So, so, but I'm saying that it is impossible for us to have a nine wasted years. Uh, 
if if we didn't have the nine wasted years, you spoke about the justice system. And it, at that time, all the waking, section nine institutions were working very well. You are, before the nine wasted years, your service was at its best. Your public protector was a public protector at that time, before that time. Your ESCO, though it had some deliberate sabotages, it had deliberate sabotages. Remember the first load shedding was because people were supposed to order coal. That is the report. Mm. It's there. Go and read it online. Mm. There was a commission. Even the president said it. Or I apologize by mistake because I was ill-informed. As much as when we were, when we were decampaigning him, going to Polokwan, we were misinformed. We were still young at the time. Mm. The information which was given about him is not what it was. But because we were not reading and because we were not analyzing a lot of things at the time, we could listen to, the, to our, 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 our leaders. We believed what they said. Mm, mm. But now, it's only now. That's why they say the truth takes long to come out. The truth came out. I was on the public protector at the time. That was the third institution. So what happened to the police? You even had a, an overnight minister. At some the, point, at the finance, the hawks were removed. The hawks, mm. was it the hawks at that time? Yeah, it was, was the, the Scorpio. Well, no, no, the Scorpio. Oh, the, yeah, the Scorpio was removed. The Scorpions removed. were removed. So you can see that mm. the the nine wasted years was just to collapse everything, and you had people lending from for a wedding with no home affairs involved. They just came in with their private jet. I can tell you that right now there are many white people with lending strips in their farms who leave the country and come back. As they, we don't even know what they're bringing or what they're taking out of the country. And that I don't know about. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm, 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 I've had it when I was DJ. Those things. Yeah, I you see, you speak in rumors. I don't want to. I don't want to speak something not that, that I don't. No, that they have lending strips. There are many farms with lending strips. Even here, when you, when you go past Silicon. There's a lens strip that you see every day. Yeah, but that is a private airport. That's what people do. And these people, these things, are, they are having them in their farms. Let me not get also, into that. I'll, I'll go, 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 and it. It yeah, go and but check again, it out. But again, I was just attempting... Let's call politicians to come and address that. They must come and teach us these things. Yes, yeah. politicians will tell us about those things. We don't know these things. Yeah, we don't know that one. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was just trying to, to give just a, 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 a lame debate there. But... Your, your own land reform, are you happy with the way this process is going? To me, to me, though I don't want to be an analyst today because I need politicians to come and unbundle that particular Explain aspect. this. Thing. Because to me, it sounds like it's more of a rhetoric. It sounds more like a campaigning mechanism. Which party doesn't have that, that in their manifesto now? Mm. The land issue. The land issue... As you said earlier on, it was debated because of a new political party which came in. Is there in the ANC? Is there yeah. in the a, 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 a Freedom Charter? The land belongs to all who live it, in it. But even today, what is it that we are doing? Some of the land was returned back to the people. You remember there was an issue of farms being taken back to the people. Now, what is the master plan? I can hear the political parties are saying, the land, you remember the PAC always said, the land first, all shall follow. Mm. It was their slogan at the time. But now, there was a certain portion which was given back. But the, those farms are in, are, are in Faro now. There's no production on the farms. And they were the best farms at the time. They were given back to our grandmothers. No program taking place at the moment as we speak. If we are saying the land must be given back, also, also, political parties, please, come up with a master plan. Don't just say people must get the land. Okay. Come up with a master plan. How are we going to ensure that the land is productive? Yeah. Uh, I think I derailed you on when you were still explaining that you were misled to demonize, to lack of the better way, to demonize President Tabombeki. And you think he was on the right path. 
and we disturbed him. We did generally, but they, remember, there will always be positive and negative in every aspect of life. You cannot just be holy in everything. Remember, the, 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 the culture of corruption start, started to, to be seen during his time. He even, I remember he even gave a speech complaining about officials who come to work as late as possible and leaving, leaving work as early as possible. And that now is becoming a very serious culture wherein things are not, people are just doing as they wish. Even human resources will tell you, I, that one we cannot touch. If we touch him, I will be dismissed. Instead of the person who's doing wrong, who's coming as late as possible, who's living as early as possible, if they try to charge such a person, they will tell you, no, that one is untouchable. He's close to the powers that be. Well, what are biggest uh, milestones, if we can highlight them? Well, maybe politicians should come and tell us. I don't know. They can come and argue. Yeah. Because I don't want to, I don't want to be seen speaking for him. But I'm just trying to show that there was that trajectory. Now, whoever is coming to take over the governance now, we want them to come. Let them come here and sit where I am seated and even expand so that they can be many, mm. so that they can tell us how best are they going to improve the situation from where it was? How best are they going to improve uh, rail, railway lines? Do you know, Cappuccino, that it takes one, tra uh, one train is equivalent to two to 280 trucks on the road. Oh, really? One train is equivalent to 280 trucks. Imagine if coal or whatever was whatever has been uh, taken to the to the to the to the to the sea or to the to the ships. If we had the trains working, it means we'll have less trucks on the road. But because the system had to be corrupted, somebody with trucks had to benefit. That has been done. But is that Zuma? I, I didn't say Zuma, Mjan. Don't, don't, don't I'm put, asking questions. It's, it's, it's what is happening within the I, I believe that the railway collapsed completely recently, isn't it? When uh, Fikile Mbalula was the Minister of Transport. I think around the COVID and everything, when there was issues of contractors, security companies who used to guard the railway were removed. Yeah, you see that one, it needs the owners, the politicians to come and argue on it. Yeah, I'm just because, highlighting these things. Nakere. Yeah, infrastructure-wise, infrastructure, ah. infrastructure wise, it has been distracted. Yeah. There was a bill last year going around on the rail. If it passes into law, I'm not sure if it has been passed into law now. Mm. The infrastructure is not there. There are no railway, no railway lines. So what is going to happen? Now all I'm saying is, when then Uzuma? Uzuma when then? Okay, we are moving. Uh, uh, we're likely to have a coalition government, as many people predict, or as many organizations or many people wish, that... ANC can fall below 50%, uh, maybe play around the 40s or 30s so that there can really be coalition. Uh, 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 what's your take on this issue, uh, political coalitions? Because, I mean, we're looking at maybe some of the challenges that can be brought by that. I mean, we have diverse political ideologies. You're having a party that believes Mabahambe. The other one believes uh, we must open the borders. The other one believes this and different ideologies. And those people, they come and sit uh, uh, in one place for the sake of governing. And that affects policy priorities. And this can lead to ideological clashes, disagreements on key issues, and also making it challenges to, 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 to form a cohesive government. You see, we have the issue of power sharing and decision making. Uh, uh, someone feels, or uh, we had more votes than you. We need to occupy this strategic position. And I think there are many challenges. There's issue are uh, also trust and communication. You know, mm. the very same thing that you were, when you were talking about progressive corruption, I was thinking, how do you implement progressive corruption 
with people, people you don't trust, who are not your cadres. You understand what I'm talking about? When a solution is needed now, for instance, if people don't eat, I'm giving a, a DJ example, if they don't eat in the next three hours, they will die and we can't procure. But there's a way we can get money and get the trucks to those people and bypass the processes. Mm -hmm. You see? And also we have issue here, frequent leadership changes. Remember, during coalitions, when you lobby the others so no, we are removing this person. And we have seen it a lot with mayors. Or we have seen it where, maybe a classical example, DA pronounced that they don't want to work with EFF. They forgot that <laughs> EFF put them on, many, uh, on leadership of many municipalities. Then EFF started to whip them. Mm. Within three, four weeks, <laughs> they got whipped, those people. They were removed yeah. from power. So it's like now, there's no stability there. Anything can change. And, and, and that, for instance, uh, leads to even, for even in the ANC, I believe, in the ANC government, when another leader comes, another MEC comes, sometimes they don't want to entertain what was started. There's no continuation yeah. there. Uh, and this issue are obviously external pressure. External pressure comes from constituency of the parties. But all I'm saying, I'm just giving this thing to give a background for those who understand politics and those who are politicians to come and shed a light in terms of if they go to coalition, how are they going to run our government effectively and efficiently as possible? Look, DJ, coalition with different ideologies. How many parties in South Africa do have a political ideology? How many? Not all parties have an ideology. I can put that argument. Some are just parties, they're just there because they've got funding and most of the parties are funded from the same source. There are people whose business is to fund political organizations mm. and opposing political organizations. What, what is the plan with this thing here? So many mushroom parties with... You know, I observed something, eh? like in town. Yeah. Polokwan. We have posters of Action SA. Yeah. Posters of Rise Mzanzi. Mm. I'm not sure if I saw Bosa. And I saw DA. I saw Freedom Front. I, I saw the EFF. You know, they have a big... When you get in town at night, there's that screen that Mercedes-Benz. Mm. There's Julius Malema there. And I haven't seen a recent poster of the ANC in Polokwan City. That is the ruling party. Mm. Oldest liberation, the liberation party, the oldest party than them all. And these parties have a budget. And did you see the correct, correct box, the, 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 the board they're using? Mm. Those are expensive. Yeah. And I drove to a vendor the other time. I saw, I saw Rise Mzanzi was very, very much colorful and uh, visible. In Reed Richard, in Venda. And I'm like, ah, oh, what's where she get like But what is the agenda behind this thing? Yeah, but remember this, the agenda is to unseat the ruling political party of all these other parties. It's not to deliver services. It's just to unseat the city, the, 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 the organization which is mm. in power now. But now, and, and the organization which is in power now is falling right into the trap because the deployed people are not doing what they are supposed to be done. Rise Mzanzi leaders, come. Please come and explain what is your plan, what is your ideology. Uh, uh, come and uh, tell us about these allegations that you are funded somewhere to be controlled, to change the status quo. Come no, to no, it's the talk. same as, as, as the new political party of, of the former uh, president. Mm -hmm. The former president is saying I'm a member Which of one? Uh, comrade Jacob Zuma. Yeah, I must mention this. Yeah, thing. He's, he's still I can't a comrade. Confused, that yeah. one. He's still a comrade. Yeah. But he's no longer a comrade of the ANC because what he's saying is, uh, I'm here as a member of this party, but I'm campaigning for another party to come in and sit the ruling party. What type of a thinking is that? Is mm. that an ideology? What ideology is there? And it simply tells you that. There is an unfinished business from the nine wasted years which you are arguing 
that they were not there. This is an unfinished business that needs to be finished. Yeah, now I hear that you were listening to President Tabombeki two weeks ago. Is it two weeks ago? Yeah, it's, it's about two weeks ago. Yeah. But remember, what I'm saying is uh, I still read my, on my own and I can still think on my own and I can still see things on my own. I, I find him very hypocritical. I'll tell you why. He's saying the formation of Nkundu Ezizu is anti-revolutionary. And he was directly or indirectly linked with COPE, okay. the formation of COPE. Right. And he was mum about it, even to, to refuse association with COPE. He didn't do that. Only at a later stage. Because, because he's smart. Remember, sometimes you must play smart. Politics is politics. Yeah, I'm, I'm still coming. This is the president. Last year, around September, said, why should I uh, campaign for a party led by criminals? Okay. In relation to the Palapala saga. Okay. But last week he was telling us, we must go with the ANC. I, 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 I tend to differ with you on that particular no, aspect. No, that, I'm giving you what happened. No, no. I tend to differ with you because by the time you were saying, I'm not going to campaign, for that political organization. It was the time the municipalities were in shambles. Even in his ward, there was a person who was charged with a criminal offense. But people were saying, uh, the organization was saying, we are forwarding this particular candidate. I, I listened to his speech at that time. No, no, so, sorry, Doctor, to to do. He spoke about not campaigning for the political party in relation to the party being led by criminals. But he's and not... Uh, where, where I tend to differ with you, it was the issue of Palapal. Palapal yeah. Saga was out of the equation. Yeah. Well, it, it was means politicians. There. We're saying the politicians, politicians <laughs> of the ANC, you are more than welcome. Bring your people, bring your sharpest minds. Come and tell us why we should vote for you. Also clarify these issues uh, so that we can understand them better. Hey, Lamoshwela Tabombeki. Not really. Rishwela Country Arena because the country is, is just being sold. Yeah, no, no. I like, going. I, I like him too. I, I, I do read some of uh, his material. But re remember, we also need to, now where I'm sitting right now at this chair, I must point out the other negative for the sake of putting Because the if you check what, what, what the, current, the current president is, is, is trying to do, He's trying his level best mm. to take the country out of where it was. But unfortunately, it, the culture, the, the, the culture which has been instilled of not working for this country is, because, is, a, is a serious problem. Mm. Uh, people can do what they want. Who, where are they going to account? There's a problem. You cannot charge most of the people when they do wrong. If we can just bring that that, that issue back, then I'm telling you, the country is going to improve. The deployed cadres will go, are going to improve. Most of the people who are campaigning even now, most of them are don't have the interest of the country at heart. They have their personal interest at heart and the masters. Mm. Mm. Remember, as I indicated earlier, there's somebody who just decided to open a company of funding these people so that they can account to, the, to them. What is happening to our... Now we are, we are crying. We've got all the mineral resources in Africa. And we are the worst exporters in the whole of Africa. At about 134 billion exporting. We depend on foreign aids. Are we the people who are supposed to be depending on foreign aids? Or we were supposed to be giving foreign aid to those countries? So why do we let the colonial system to continue, because they were smart. When they see, hey, these guys are becoming clever, they start to find your own people to create new political parties to destabilize you. And those people at the time, they'll be having money. And all they see is the vision of saying, no, you see, these people are wrong. Mm. Majority of the political organizations, the politicians must come and, 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 and sit here, mm. show our people that most of the political parties are not there 
to improve the economy of this country. Let, let them make sure that we've got productions in our own soil. Let's export to them gold, uranium, you name them. All the mines are around us. Go to Skukun. There's poverty. Holes all over because even now they started to become mafias. They steal our own mineral resources. And if you go deep down and find out who are the people involved, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. Now that you mentioned uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, it is alleged that the state-owned enterprises, it does a deliberate action to collapse them in order to sell them. Uh, I mean, uh, state-owned enterprises in South Africa are having a lot of pro problems. Yeah, you are SAA. Right now. Yeah. You are DNL. Yeah, ranging from uh, corruption and mismanagement, uh, uh, whereby, you know, there's a lot of corruption scandals and there's a lot of allegations and millions that went out and missing <coughs> from them. We have the issue of financial viability. I mean, classical cases are even including ESCOM, including SAA, they can't even sustain themselves. They must always be on a consistent bailout, consistent bailout. The issue of inefficient poor performance that leads to obviously them not being able to run themselves and also not even be able to give us electricity. Some look, of them. look, let me stop you there, Cappuccino. That is, what you are saying is the same article here, John Andres, as the president was trying to unpack it. There was that time where everything was, they were trying to collapse the entire system. So, remember, there was a deliberate There was a deliberate, plan. yeah, there was a deliberate plan. Under Ramaphosa. No, no, it was done after. Ramaphosa. To, after two, 2007. After Polo, let me say, put it clear, it was done after the Polo Guan conference. So it started with President Jacob Zuma. It started there. And now, that culture is still there. When President Cyril Ramaphosa was there. He came deputy. in and, and, and he found out some of... Right. He was, the problem with him was that he was very quiet at the time. Many people are blaming him for being quiet at that particular time when he was still the deputy. I, to me, it was a strategic move. It was a, it, that would be my argument to say it was a strategic move so that he could ascend to the presidency. And if you check some of the aspects, he, he rescued a number of things. Okay. He res, the, the economy has been rescued a little bit. Mm. Uh, though people will argue that the, the unemployment is, is high. It's high because of the population growth. But in terms of the percentages, that is why... Uh, 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 Premier Chubuma Tabata was saying the unemployment rate is, is increasing at a decreasing rate. That is the, that is the what language. What is he trying to say? What is this That is poetry? the language he used. What is this poetry now? Uh, is there no sense? In the, what is he saying? Yeah, but remember, he's an economist. I'm not an economist. Remember, we've got a Premier who's educated, like enough. Yeah, but so some what things I'm saying, must make sense. He was, he was trying to, to indicate us. that mm. In terms of statistical counting, unemployment is going up. Mm. But because of the population growth and the number of people who are graduating and so forth and so forth, the percentage, in terms of the percentage, is going down. Mm. So you can come in, call him to come and explain it better. Yeah, the, the, the premier of uh, uh, <laughs> Limpopo, if you're listening, uh, please come to Just Talk with DJ Capacino to clarify this matters. We want to understand uh, what's, I mean, his heading is leading the ANC. I think he can be, even be able to be giving us the true vision yeah. of what ANC Limpopo is planning. Uh, I was still explaining the issues in this uh, state on enterprises. Mm -hmm. Issue are labor relations. We have a lot of strikes, salary, what, what. People are unhappy. We have issue are governance weaknesses. We have you know, if you are corporate governance, that is hampered by progressive corruption. No, that, no, that is not progressive that, corruption. That, that was taught no, in no, Sasko. No, no, that is not progressive corruption. Progressive corruption only happens, it's like a cabal. You only implement it for a particular aspect. Yes, yes. That's so that is not progressive corruption. They, they, they say some of the things that they've done, 
it was necessary for them to do. But not collapsing the state. Collapsing uh, the state is not necessary. I'm just Post 2008, the state was deliberately collapsed. Deliberately collapsed. Okay. Uh, we are also dealing with the issue of uh, policy and regulation uncertainty. I mean, SOEs are operate, operating in a very complex uh, uh, policy and regulatory environment, and policies are not followed. Those regulations are just discarded. And also, issue of debt burden, burden. South Africa carry high level of debt, trillions of rents owed, I don't know even to who, and uh, which is uh, making it very much unstable to govern. Let me answer you from, from that perspective to indicate... No, I'm, in fact, the, yeah. The I, problem I, I, here... I'm just through. giving scenarios, ne? Exactly. So that even politicians who are listening yeah. should come and clarify these things and how they're going to solve them. Remember, some problems are there and maybe there's a solution that us voters can know about. So we're inviting them to come. Yeah, remember, they should also address... The, if, if that is the intention... They must address the issue of bureaucracy because that is the one which is delaying everything. Bureaucracy is becoming a problem. Bureaucracy cuts Bureaucracy is progressive corruption. You like the concept and 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 yeah, and, the, I like the fact that you were taught in Sasko. No, no, we, did, we, we we I was not taught that one. <laughs> Bureaucracy is delaying almost everything and okay. is delaying. Mm. So if we can just have a system. Which, which will manage that bureaucratic processes. Because now, instead of delivering, we are looking at the processes that you are going to deliver. You know with. what's my take, doctor? Yes. There's nothing wrong with bureaucracy. There must be an element that causes friction. There must be someone not doing what he's supposed to do. Or people who are not doing what they're supposed to do. But the concept of a bureaucratic organization where things must be done step by step is very necessary for corporate governance. But we have someone, as you were saying, who would come late, leave that day. We have someone who has his own interests. If his interests are not shown on a project that can help the people, he folds his arms. He refuses with a signature. He leaves the papers in his office to pile up and pile up and pile up. That causes that friction. That is where we need politicians to come and tell us, yeah. convince the voters, how are they going to solve such issues? Because mm. if you check, the majority of the people, especially the middle class, mm. they don't vote. Because these are some of the issues which are frustrating them. Mm. Politicians come and explain to us, how are you going to solve this particular problem? And you know what I'm interested in? I'm interested in, especially these new parties, to come and Share us and tell us their plans. The very same ones that you are alleging they are funded by one shop. Yeah, they must also tell us their ideology. Majority of them must also give us their ideology. Yes. We, need to, nice. under, we need to understand their economic policy. Yeah. Let them come. We want to understand the economic policy. Where are they taking this country to? Not just to say they've done one, two, three. The ruling party has done one, two, three. We need to know what is it that you are do, we are going to do. What is your ideal economic policy? They don't have. I People are just there to criticize and go I to noted government. Action SA, hey, they, they, they absorb giants in their structures with regard to corporate governance. Uh, guys who are knowledgeable, who have track record, experience yeah. and everything. And I was like, yo, this is really something else. But uh, 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 um, I'm, I'm with you on that one. Maybe most of them, we don't understand their ideology and they need to come here. I was listening to this Zungu guy okay. from, is it ATM? Uh, in all honesty, I was impressed. Okay. I think uh, his clear is not a very, uh, he's soft-spoken, he puts his points across, and I think he was very practical to me, listening to him, and I, I really love that point. Of, of debate. I think it's, it's the new politics. It's not about the forcing and that firm rhetoric that you are actually shoving things down to people. And that's why I even enjoy interviews. For instance, I also inter enjoy interviews of many politicians 
when they are doing interviews, not when they're giving speeches. Okay. Because when they inter they are interviewed, they are able to give a perspective that is very different from when they are entertaining and interacting with the crowds. For instance, if you uh, uh, get a chance, but I think Cyril Ramaphosa has mastered being who he is, even when he's giving speeches, even when he's attending to interviews. But I think you'll find also a different face of Julius Male mm -hmm. when he's handling interviews than when he's giving speeches and everything. You'll enjoy and also understand some of the stuff that he has actually mentioned there. And we are saying, we are creating that environment now. Remember this podcast episode is to encourage political parties to come mm. and in a relaxed environment and unbundle these things that we don't understand about their parties. Like we are saying, Julius is a seasoned uh, cadre. He's a seasoned politician. He's a very good politician. But there's an element of the land mm. from his organization, which is one of uh, their seven cardinal points. Mm. We need him to come and somebody from that organization to come and explain it mm. immediately. If we take the land tomorrow, how are we? That is most the most important uh, issue, the land issue. Mm. It's very key. People get the land, they get the farms, they build on it. Pro pro uh, land which can produce what are, what is the master plan on the issue, issue of the of land? land? Let them come and explain to us, this mm. is what we need to do. This is how we're going to unpack it. Mm. Uh, where you live is where you pray. That's where you live is where you play. Mm. Where you live is where you stay. All those things, those social amenities, how are you going to, 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 to put them together mm. and ensure that we still have productive land? Exactly. So let them come and explain to us. Mm. Section 25 of the, of, 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 of the land, it was not amended. Why? Let them come and explain to us. Why is it not done? What, what is the plan going forth? This is 2024. Mm. We are going to the elections. What is the plan? Coalition parties, what is your master plan on this particular aspect? Mm. Let them come in and, and explain to us to say, if we get into a coalition on the land issue, because it's inevitable, coalitions are inevitable now, but they must come and explain to us, not just to criticize. Mm. We need to know the master plan. The problem with the master plans in South Africa, the last master plan I saw was for Oliver Tamb. That was the only master plan that I remember of. Mm. Maybe there's another one which I did not see. Maybe uh, somebody will tell, come and correct me and say, no, 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 you are still left behind. There was a master plan, yeah, mama, mama, this is what it said. There was master plan after that one. This is what it said. And we also need to move away from the World Bank and the IMF because you, you, you raised an issue to say uh, there's a problem of debt. That's the World Bank and IMF. Mm. The structural adjustment which has been done is still there, is still in existence even today. When, when during that era, when everything was going up, there was stability. Now everything went down, the collapse of the entire systems. As, as you are refusing when I'm talking about an unfinished business with this much, most of the mushrooming political parties, so I see you, you, you are trying to disrupt you when I'm talking about that one. No, 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 I'm not. I, I, I'm, I'm just giving a different perspective. Yeah, the mushroom uh, political organization, mm. especially this one which is taking uh, the name of the uh, military wing. Oh, the Mkondoesis. The military wing. Yeah. It shows there's unfinished business there. That needs to be finished. And then, Collapsing the state enterprises and everything mm. which the current gov uh, uh, sitting gov government is trying to bring up. Then they realize, oh, no, 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 no. Something is wrong. Nuclear will never go to South Africa here. Mm. So you, I, 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 there's, there's this thing, uh, a court process, I believe, that Okara, they want to disqualify the MK using the name MK and also President Jacob Zuma. Do you think it's good for the country? Won't it disrupt the elections? It depends on the intention of that. The for, You see... No, there's they, an intention. There's an intention of using that name deliberately. That has been, that has been well mastered. Remember, you were talking about a thinker. Was MK 
uh, MK was it MKV Veterans League? Um, what, this is a, Veterans Association, yeah, yeah, MKVA. Yeah. Was it not disbanded? At a particular time, it was. It was, no? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to check that. Uh, that's, that's the only thing that I wanted to check. Okay. <laughs> Remember, I'm not a spokesperson of the ANC. <laughs> I'm yeah. just trying to put out the perspective to show the nine wasted years was an unfinished business that needs to be continued somehow. And uh, the, uh, these other political uh, uh, I'm parties... I'm saying there was, with, there, there's no such thing as nine wasted years. With these other political parties that are coming, mm. how are they going to resurrect and how are they going to quarantine the collapse of those uh, parastatas and the entire Section 9 institutions? That, how that, are they that, going that to were, make sure... That were collapsed during the nine wasted years? Yes, yes, proudly so, yes. Okay. You know, as we wrap up... I think Dr. even uh, Andres', Andres article also shows it very well. Uh, you, you must please share that article with me. Go and check it online. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as we wrap up, I want us to reduce the politics to local politics now. I want us to deal with our problems and village problems, you know, village politics. Uh, with regard to also the politicians telling us what they're going to do to help us there, you know, in, in the villages, we still struggle to get uh, health care. We, we, we have to walk many kilometers. Sometimes when we arrive there, we are turned back that come tomorrow. Uh, there is no what what. There's still our grandmothers and fathers in the villages mm. who can even receive their chronic medication. Who, who can even, you know, uh, the education is, is, is also inferior. Uh, uh, that's why most of some of our rural schools are performing really bad because of the commitment from the teachers. Also, uh, teachers that are not even capable. But what are we saying, maybe with regard to addressing now our problems? How can these elections, 29 May, help us? Kabajina, you know, if, 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 if I was a minister or, or, or a president, mm. the first thing I was going to do was to consider the salary of a teacher. Mm. A teacher is the primary source of everything. You're agreeing with uh, Julius Malim on that one? The teacher is the primary source of everything. Mm. Not, not because I'm the son of a teacher, mm. but you also analyze their work. But I think public servants uh, uh, across board, I mean, the salary of a nurse, yeah. the police, I mean, sometimes... Uh, uh, police take as little as 20 rands in order for them to enforce the law. They turn a blind eye for 20 rands. Mm. You see? So those are some of the fundamental issues that needs to be looked into. What are the parties saying about these salaries? Mm. I'm a doctor today. Who was the first person who made me, who made sure that my thinking capability can be where they are today. It's a teacher. Mm. It's a teacher. Mm. The politician who's deciding the salaries of a teacher is more concerned about his than that one of a teacher. Sometimes we are saying when, when teachers are refusing to assist kids after school with sports, choirs and everything, we blame them. Mm. But we don't look into the fundamental issues if their salaries and their benefits can be reconsidered, if I, was, if, if I was the president, I would even say, let them get 50% of the buses, state buses, when they go to work. Mm. That what, that's what I would say to the teachers. Because the entire system is becoming... I mean, they are the people who can even help us make sure that people can think broadly about the nation, not themselves. Remember, the problem is that in the past, people were trained. They were not taught. You had training colleges for police. You had training colleges for teachers. They were trained to feel superior when they were in class. The system has changed. They are now educated to understand that they are part of the community. They are not superior 
to the community. So with that particular aspect, let us reconsider their benefits so that it can help the nation to grow better. And immediately we can do that. I'm telling you, we're going to become the best in the world because we've got all the resources, we've got everything. What do we lack? Focus. Here I am, uh, my teacher failed. I wanted to be a doctor. I'm a DJ, uh, uh, maybe because of the salaries. Uh, I think we need to close it here, uh, Dr. Koz. We are going to have a lot of these chats until the 29th, even after, where whenever we feel like we sit and talk okay. about these issues. That's why this special episode, as soon as it's edited, it will be available online for people to consume. And uh, I think we want to thank uh, the third eye. We want to thank the third eye to also be part of our production today. Uh, Mabota Papa, as always, uh, uh, productions to be here to also, it actually brought us to where we are. And we are saying, let's move. And we're still encouraging politicians to come and help us, come and clarify their manifestos, come and tell us why we need to vote for them. And also, if you're listening, please, on the comment section, tell us which party we should vote for and why. Thank you. This was another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Special episode. Yeah.